And we'll go ahead and start with Kelly Quinlan from Rivals. Good, hey, Jordan. I hope you're doing well. How you doing, Kelly? Good, man. I was just curious kind of uh, how you're feeling physically. I know you were still kind of rehabbing in the spring and all that stuff. Are you full go now and kind of how's uh, camp been for you? I feel great right now. I, I feel the best I've felt since freshman year. Uh, uh, camp is going really good right now. Um, we just everything's good right now. Uh, everybody's practicing healthy. We got a few bang ups here and there, but everything's running smooth at practice. Um, to kind of follow up on what Kelly asked, I'm curious. You know, obviously, normally this time you'd already be in pads, but to still, you know, to be in, in shorts and helmets, what, what, I might just be different. What has it been like to to be at that stage? Uh, just to be at this stage, I mean, it's just to get uh, more reps in. So, say if we was in pads and stuff like that, um, you know, it'd be more complicated and more chaos. But with just just spiders that we got on right now, it's just it's been running way smoother. Um, it's just, it's just more, uh, you know, more um, oriented, yeah. Next question from Rod McKenzie, 247 Sports. Hey, Jordan, how you doing, man? Good, how about you? I'm doing great, thanks. Hey, uh, since last season, you've added two new faces to the group in uh, Jameer and, and uh, Bruce. Uh, how have they adapted to the chemistry of the, the group and what are you seeing from them? Uh, uh, I just start with uh, Bruce. Uh, you know, I've been uh, seeing Bruce since we uh, got here. Uh, he's a, uh, you know, he's hard working. He's uh, coming along with the um, with the running back stuff. He's still learning, uh, still trying to get um, that touch that he needs to be the uh, best running back he can be. And just going Jameer, he's he's a he's a freak of nature. That's what I can't say about him. Uh, he he can move quick. Uh, yeah, he's he's that dude. Next up is Allison Mastrangelo from WSB TV. Hey, I, you know, with all the news breaking about, you know, different leagues postponing until spring and now the Big South Conference also announced that, how are you guys trying to stay focused and not kind of watch everything else that's going around right now? Well, uh, me personally, I don't, I don't do social media. So if you, if you would go to my Twitter now or some. It's probably me retweeting somebody's stuff. I don't really, I don't really post. I don't really do the tweeting stuff. So, just me personally, I just keep my head down and just let me know if we playing or not, and I, I'm going from there. Cody Chaffins from Fox Five. Hey Jordan, it seems like that running back group is like a bunch of young guys and you. Do you feel like a, a coach choice junior? What's your role? Kind of with so many young guys in that game. Uh, well, I would rather not be considered as the old head, but it is what it is. So, I mean, just with me being the old head, I guess, you know, I hold my part down. Um, you know, they follow me. They say they look up to me. So, I just I try to be the best I can be. And, uh, yo, we got some athletes. So, we're going to be ready. Another question from Ken Segura. I'm sorry, Jordan, um, you know, as, yeah. as this conversation about whether the season should be played or not is going on, I think one thing that people are saying about the spring, possibly moving to spring, is that, you know, it's too much to be playing two seasons in the course of 12 months. And I'm curious, you're obviously someone who's taken a, took a pretty big pounding last season. What would you feel about playing, you know, maybe two shortened seasons in, in you know, the spring and then in the fall next year? Hey, if we play, whenever we play, I'm ready to play, and I'm ready to put the ball down and just play. Regardless of where we go, when, where, just to let me know when, and I'll be ready. Got time for one or two more for JP. We'll start with Kelly Quinlan. Jordan, I was curious if you'd set any kind of goals for yourself for this season or have some things you'd like to accomplish or just – see from the offense as well after kind of a, a rough year, but a, a good personal season for you last year? Um, just one simple goal I've set just with uh, everybody coming back is for me to be still be the man uh, this season. Uh, 
even though uh, we got people coming in, we got Jamias coming back, we got Jameer coming back. I mean, we got Jameer coming in. Still got, we still got other running backs coming in, but it's just my my goal to be the man still this season. Okay, uh, we'll take the last one from Rod McKenzie. Hey Jordan, we've we've talked about the pounding your body took last year. Oh, yeah. Has that had you maybe uh, change your approach to how you'll uh, go into this season? Uh, no, uh, ain't no changing. So I just just uh, stay the same. Just be me. That's how I got here to this day. So ain't no ain't no sense of changing. So just just go out there and be me. Okay, next up is running back at Jemias Griffin. We'll go ahead and open it right up for questions for Jemias. Same as before, if you can use the raise your hand function in Zoom to let us know if you have a question. And first one up is Cody Chaffins from Fox 5. Hey, Jemias, uh, how different are things? Obviously, they're different anyway, but how different do you feel this year coming in kind of knowing what to expect, having been through an ACC season, and, and how different do you think that'll play out on the field for you? Uh, last year, I got a lot of experience playing, uh, watching JP. So I got a great feeling uh, about this year, coming in, knowing everything. So it should be really good. Next question, Rod McKenzie from 247 Sports. Hey, uh, good morning. How are you? Good. How about uh, you? I'm doing great, thanks. Hey, uh, how much do you weigh now, and are you at, you know, after you've what you've learned from last season, do you feel like you're at, at the proper weight to uh, to play your position? Uh, I do think I'm at the proper weight, and I weigh at I'm weighing 215 right now, and uh, I feel really good at this weight. So, yeah. Kelly Quinlan from Rivals. Hey, I was just curious, kind of what are things that you've worked on after, uh, you know, the abbreviated spring and kind of going into fall camp, the, the few things that maybe Coach Choice talked to you about or some of the other guys, um, just in terms of refining your game, getting yourself to that next level. I know we talked about pad level in the spring and, yeah. and you wanted to improve that. Is that something still a focus? And uh, I, I, I definitely uh, got my pad level right, uh, looking really good. Uh, I also worked on my speed, so... I feel really good. Any additional questions for Jemias? Another one from Cody. Last year you came in and you were the guy. Everybody knew his name before he even got on campus, the big time star out of North Georgia. This year, Jameer, everybody knew his name before he got on campus. What's your relationship like with him? And can you give him any advice about people put big expectations on somebody who comes in with all those stars next to him? Jameer, that's my guy. He right, he over there waiting on me right now. So I'm gonna talk to him after I get done with this. But uh, Jameer, he's a really great player. Uh, he pushes, he pushes us. We push him. So uh, it, should, it should be really good for us in the backfield. RBI. Yeah. Yeah. I told him, uh, play your game, slow the game down, and it'll come to you. So. Ken Segura from the AJC. Ken, do you have a question? Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, you mentioned your speed. I'm curious, what did you do to improve it? And also just how much, I mean, I don't know if you can put a number on it, but do you feel actually that you're faster? Uh, yes, I do feel like I'm faster. And uh, over quarantine, I worked with my dad, uh, training, getting faster, change duration, just working, working, working. And uh, it shows up on the field when we, we got our, we wear our catapults every day and I'm, I'm faster. Allison Mastrangelo from WSB TV. I'm just more so curious as an athlete and a football player, do you have any friends that have been affected by some of these leagues being postponed and have you talked to them or have they reached out to you at all? Uh, no, ma'am, I haven't. Uh, as far as I know, everybody's good that I know. So, uh, yeah. Okay, we have time for a couple more for uh, for uh, Jemias. We'll start with Patrick Canaro from the Dahlonega Nugget. 
Jemias, hi, good morning. Hey, um, I was curious, your comfort level, catching the ball coming out of the backfield. You feel good with that? You like that play? Yes, sir, I do. I'm, uh, I feel really comfortable catching the ball at the backfield and in slot, so, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. A couple more quick ones. We'll uh, first Ken Segura from the AJC and then last one from Kelly Quinlan from Rivals. Hey, um, you know, obviously you mentioned uh, Jameer and, and obviously Jordan's there too. Like, how do you, how can you envision the three of you, you know, sharing, sharing snaps and, and doing, doing your work together? Uh, we'll, we'll be unstoppable. Yeah. If everybody stay healthy and keep grinding, uh, I don't think a team can stop us three in the backfield. So, yeah. I feel. Kelly, go ahead with the last question for Jemias. Jemias, I was curious how you feel about the offense and kind of what you've seen in camp versus a year ago. Does it seem like things are running a little smoother and the lines, you know, I know you guys aren't at pads, but I'm just curious if you're seeing the, the development. If you come out here, you'll see, you'll, you'll, you'll witness it yourself. We look really good way way better than we were last year so i just can't wait to uh, they tell us we can play whenever we can play i can't wait to get on the field with the guys and go all out with our uh last guest of the day that's uh, running backs coach deshard choice and we'll open it right up for questions for coach choice and the first one comes from kelly quinlan from rivals hey deshard hope you're doing well um, what's going on you doing all right yeah doing all right man I was just curious, you have, you know, a good group of running backs, obviously back, and then you had a guy like Jameer Gibbs who has kind of that X factor. How do you work him into the mix, and kind of what have you seen from him and the guys coming back? Uh, first, Jameer is a, is, a, is an animal. The kid is unbelievable. You know what I mean? And so for him, it's not in no, no point of just trying to get him in. He's going to play. The kid is he's unbelievable. Uh, he works his tail off, very humble. Not he don't say too many words, but he competes on the football field for. So as far as getting him in the game or getting him in the rotation, uh, his work and what he's done is gonna do that by itself. The other guys that came back from quarantine can't tell you how how much I have respect for JP and Jamias and Devin Ellison and Dante. Those guys came back in really good shape, uh, really ready, locked in, and understanding their they responsibility and their expectations and the standards. So it's actually been pretty easy. Uh, the transition from getting back and getting back on the football field. Next up, Rod McKenzie from 247 Sports. Hey, Shard, how you doing, man? What's going on? You doing all right? I'm doing great. Hey, when we talked to Jemias and, and to uh, Jordan, they, they felt like their things are really progressing at a, at a lot faster pace than they were last year. From a coach's perspective, do you fall in line with that thinking? Absolutely. You know, last year is, is a whole new transition, uh, getting the guys understanding the offense and the standards and the expectations that I have for my room and, you know, it's, especially for Coach Collins that he has for the culture. So for me, the guys have learned. They understand the protections better. They're understanding how to work hard every single day and just the little things make the big things work. And so them guys understanding that hard is the way. Whatever is hard, we got to do it. We got to do it at a high level. So they're going to have to play at a high clip this year. The guys understand that they're going to have to learn and be able, be able to adjust on the fly. And so the, the things that they've been able to do uh, this far has been very gratifying for me. But they understand that we still have to do more. And so I, the, to second, Jemise and uh, JP, they have done a really good job, and we're going to have to continue to do it. Next up, Cody Chaffins from Fox 5 here in Atlanta. Hey, Coach, it seems like the college football world is just crashing all around you guys. How do you not worry about the next time your phone buzzes, it being the ACC making some kind of decision, and, and how do you keep your guys focused? Uh, the main thing I tell the guys, and I guess it's come from the head coach, and I, and I guess it's in life. You can only control what you can control. And so I tell the guys every single day, you have an opportunity to get better. If this is our last two hours of practice, let's make it the best two hours of practice that we ever had. And so the expectations, understand that being around each other and doing the things that we're supposed to do to get better. Because we glorify the Lord in our work 
And so how we work on the football field is that just. And so the guys come out here on the football field and give me everything they got, and I'm going to do the same for them. I know it's a lot of things that's going around, and we can't control that, but if the guys work their tail off, even when it's uncertain, uncertainty outside, that's when you really get better. It's the same thing in your emotional intensity on the football field. If you can work in quarantine, if you can work your hardest in quarantine, and then you come back and it's third and three and you playing Clemson for the game, you have that same emotional intensity. That's why I try to teach my guys. And so staying in the moment, staying focused, and having that, 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 that concentration of doing what we can do now, they have done a heck of a job, man. I got nothing but respect for them because I couldn't imagine being their age and having to go through this and doing this time because as a football player and now as a coach, it's difficult on us and them guys are handling it the best they can. So it's nothing but kudos for them. Kevin Segura from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Hey, Tashar, it's good to see you. What's going on, Ken? You doing all right? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Thank you. Um, I was wondering, I don't know how much as a staff you guys have kicked around this possibility, but obviously people are talking about maybe moving to the spring. I'm curious just for you as a coach, you know, knowing all, you know, there's obviously the draft and, and recruiting and all those different things. Could you see that as being a possibility? Like, could, could, could you guys make that work, you think? You know what I, I you hear it in the media and for us, for me, it's, I think it'll be really tough for the guys, like you said, because the NFL is going to keep rolling. And then on top of that, you're going to have roster management problems, you know, with guys being on scholarship, who's coming back, guys coming in. I think it's a lot of things that you have to, to go into that, and it's plus with recruiting, because the spring is a big evaluation period for us to be on the road, if we can be on the road, to be able to recruit and see what we can get. So I don't know how possibly that can work, you know what I mean? But like I said, I guess we have to do it the best you can do and see how the tables and how the dice fall, you know what I mean, as far as what we can do and moving on. But I'm praying that we get to play right now. The guys have been safe. The, the main thing we've been preaching to them is health. The guys feel like that we, we got them in good protocols to make sure they feel healthy on the football field. And so if we can possibly play, I pray that we do. If not, we just have to keep moving on to see what happens. Allison Mastrangelo from WSB TV. Mm -hmm. How you doing, hey, Allison? Good, how are you? Doing well, doing well. And this might be a little bit of a long shot, but I know, you know, as a coach, you know, in the in the league for, you know, a couple of years, do you have any friends that have been affected by, you know, Pac-12 or Big Ten that have been, you know, like their season's over right now? And have you heard from them or, or shared any advice to them or? Yeah, you know, just talking to some of my coaches, there's some coaches that I have in different areas that, that's been affected. And they, you know, the biggest thing is they, they feel bad for the kids. You know what I mean? The kids, they play football and have an opportunity to get on the football field to do what they love to do. They all feel bad for the kids more than anything. And, you know, and you got these kids at, the, at different schools, different institutions, different universities. For them to, to for them to get together and play, uh, be a part of the game of football, and you know you have fans, you have players going together. I think it's it's it's, it's really tough on everybody. And so the part, you know, we try to tell them is to try to keep them guys mentally strong because a lot of people are having mental health issues because of it. And so the whole point is to make sure that we all together to try to keep people motivated and try to do the best that we can do. You know what I mean? Moving forward because nobody has done has had to have dealt with this part. And so I watched Hard Knocks last night, and you can see NFL is going through this, a similar thing. You know, you don't, you, you can't make sure everybody's 100% safe. You try, because we don't know how this thing is going to go. But the main thing is to try to make sure everybody is smart and everybody try to do the best they can do so everybody can be safe. Just a real follow up to that. You know, the chance that the ACC and the SEC does play, I mean, there could be a lot of eyes on, uh, you know, the ACC. You could maybe get some national TV games that maybe you wouldn't. I mean, do you guys even kind of, run that possibility right now or is it too, you know, that's too far down the road to think about? You know, I, it, what's funny is, you know, the guy's just really ready to play. You know, that's what's, it's interesting because when I talk to him, I say, man, if you guys have any doubts or anything, just talk to me, let me, let me know how you feel. And they say, coach, man, we just want to get on the football field and play. This is what we love to do. If we're healthy and, we're, it's, and everybody's healthy doing the right things, we want to get on the football field and perform and, you know, have our fans to be able to watch. And so I think they're more excited than anything I am. But, you know, you take it day by day because you know this thing is ever changing. So I try to keep them level headed and just take it one day at a time, one time for the one time. That's what I always tell my guys. <laughs> We've got time for uh, two or three more for Coach Choice. Uh, we'll start with Ken Segura from the AJC. Hey, sure. I was wondering, um, you know, obviously I think kids are coming back to campus and the message of, of 
safety and, and making good decisions. I'm sure you guys are preaching, but can you tell us like some specifics of, of things you're telling the kids of like, whether it's don't go out at all or, or, or kind of stay in your dorm or whatever it is, kind of what sort of things are you saying, advising them to do and not do? You know, what's interesting, Ken, and I tell the guys this all the time, like when you play football or what you, whatever you do in life, really is never about yourself. Most of the time you'll get the credit for doing something. Your name is on the paper. My name is a running backs coach, but ultimately I do it for something bigger than myself. And so when you go into that dorm room or when you when you're away from us at the football facility, whatever you do is going to affect everybody. It's not about yourself. And when you can really go in your life and do something truly when it's not about yourself and you're really doing it for everybody else so everybody is gratified and everybody can do something together as a unit, that's something bigger. And that's what I preach to my guys. Whatever you do, this this what we have going through this pandemic is going to be huge. But if they can understand and grasp that as a young age, being 20, 21 years old, understanding that you play on the you play the game of football, and when you're in the room of making sure you're not going out, making sure you're not doing something that you're not told to do in protocol, making sure you put your teammates before yourself. That's all we're trying to preach. And if you can honestly do that. And we can get on the football field and you can play with your teammates. I think ultimately that's the goal for everybody in our organization and for Coach Collins down. I think he's been preaching that since day one, and that's how I truly feel. And so I tell the guys, hey, listen, you can't be around nobody that's new. Stay around your same group of guys. You know what I mean? If you're around people, wear a mask. Do the right thing. It don't cost much. Just like if I ask you to run the football and finish five extra yards, do it. It ain't gonna it ain't gonna hurt. It may hurt a little more, but in the long run, hard is the way. That's what I preach to my dudes in the RBI. Hard is the way. So if anything that's hard during this time, we're just gonna have to find a way to get it done. Kelly Quinlan. So Shard, you mentioned, you know, uh, recruiting and that piece of it. How difficult has it been? You guys lost the spring evaluation period, you lost your summer camps and official visits and all of that stuff and Kids for games are probably out the window on the immediate future as well. Just can you mm -hmm. talk about the how you guys have approached that? Because you you guys are very good with kids in person. I imagine that it's been a huge deal for you guys to adjust to that. You know, big on innovation now. You have to find another way to get to them. You know what I mean? But like to be honest with you, recruiting is always about relationships. And it's always about being personable to connecting with kids. And so now that you have way more time to talk to them on the phone, you have more time to communicate with them, you have a better chance to communicate with them and do the evaluation process doing that way. Now these kids now are doing a lot of things. They're posting it on social media. They're going back and coaches are showing different workouts so you get a chance to see them or they'll send you film or they practice it during the day. And so you have to make sure that you, when you watch the tape, you got to believe what you see. And on top of that, you got to talk to them on the phone, see how they communicate, see what they say when you ask them about practicing different things that they're doing to see if they believe in the things that we believe in at this school, about being one of us, about hard work works about 100% effort, you will hear it when you talk to kids. And so you have to be able to be able to communicate with them. And, and ultimately for me, and I can't speak on everybody else, it's been, it's been really good for me because I have a lot more time just to get to know people, get to talk to them, talk to their parents, and get to see their backgrounds and how they come up and what they truly believe in. Okay, our last one for Coach Choice is from Rod McKenzie. Hey, Chard, with, with guys yes, like – with guys like uh, Jordan and Griffin and, and Gibbs in the room, you don't hear too much about, you know, Ellison and Smith. What do they bring to the table? You know, I'm going to first talk about Devin. Some, you, you would know a lot about Devin Ellison. Somebody who's always going to show up very consistent, very consistent in what he does on the football field and off the football field, in the classroom, how he works out and what he does on the football field. No mental errors. He knows what he's doing. Somebody's going to get a lot of playing time. He works his tail off, and everybody in that football room has number of, number of respect for him. And so for me personally, having a guy that comes in, he knows everybody else is going to get more exposure. He just works his tail off, goes about his work the right way. And so you could, I can see this guy playing for Tech for a long time through his four years, and so I'm excited to have him. Man, He's one of the leaders of of our room if I put him on the board he knows what he's doing and he's somebody that I had him tutor Gibbs he's he's Gibbs biggest brother and so if I wanted Jameer to learn everything I wanted to team him up with Devin for that very reason even though they competing to get playing time for them being unselfish selfishness 
having unselfishness and, and working with each other has been really well for the room. And then Dante, he came back off of quarantine. I think he came in like 190, 192. He looks ripped. He's playing faster. You know what I mean? He just got to continue to work hard on the football field. But somebody who's going to be on special teams and all those guys will probably be on special teams one way or the other. But to see them guys work together, that whole group has been very, uh, very pleasing, but I tell them every day they sorry as hell, and they all understand why. Because if any of them tell you they good, y'all let me know. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> all right, well, I love them. I think that is a perfect note to end on. So. Appreciate y'all.